Joining me is Stephen Roberts. He's a Canadian award-winning actor and he's also a writer and he has a memoir we're we'll talking about. He's here also to talk about his role in the feature film River Road, River Road and how he maintains a healthy lifestyle. Welcome, Stephen. Hi, thanks for yeah. having me. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations on your award, your Leo Award. And what was, how excited were you? Um, I was, I was, I was excited. I mean, I, I had no idea I'd even been submitted for the award this year. Like there, uh, I was, I was submitted the last couple of years um, and nominated as well. Um, so I was, I was really surprised. Actually, I had other friends and I was kind of rooting for them this year at the Leos and, and uh, a, a short film called Cake Day as well that I was also in. Uh, and then when I looked on the website, it like turned out I'd been nominated for Best Supporting Actor. So I was like really, really surprised. Um, and yeah, it was, it was exciting for sure. Yeah, definitely for Rob Wiley, the director and, and the rest of the cast. So, and I didn't, it's nice, like I wasn't expecting it, you know, so. It was a nice surprise. Isn't that, isn't that great when you don't expect it? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it was for best supporting performance. And you play the character as Fresno, uh, a crack dealer. Is that right? It's actually, well, he's a heroin dealer um, and he refuses to cut his dope with fentanyl. So that was one thing that uh, really, for some reason, that resonated with me. I found that interesting that uh, it's like a dope dealer with ethics. And, uh, and I just, I, I found that really interesting. That's kind of what attracted me to the script in the first, uh, in the first place. So um, yeah, that's, yeah, he's like, you know, not the, not the kindest person and, uh, and uh, it's fairly intense. So uh, I think it got, uh, it got a little acknowledgement, I think. Yeah. So that's what attracted you to the role. And, and also you spent uh, many years as um, a support worker advocate in the downtown east side and and can you can you tell us about that Stephen? uh yeah that's it was over uh i have a, a 10-year certificate I, I was down there a little over that i'd worked in 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 different um in different capacities down there uh, i was uh, like a detox worker shelter worker advocate at one point um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it's been a gift. I mean, it's, it's one of those things I've kind of moved on now and I'm, you know, pursuing this storytelling thing. My life just kind of took me in this direction, but it's, it, it's one of those things that I think it really kept me, kept me grateful for a long time and kept me moving forward in my own life. And, and, uh, you know, when you work with people and, you know, you learn the ability to really be of service to others where it really counts, uh, that's, that's really, um, that's really, it was, it was a gift for me, uh, even though I was, you know, there are such certain situations you're in sometimes, and it's uh, it's a can be a fairly aggressive atmosphere. It's uh, it really is at the end of the day, it's it's a gift to be of service to people. Yeah. Yes, and from your background, that's is like you are a messenger now. Like you you can uh, be a storyteller and 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 get into the parts that 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 you're attracted to, and um, and and that that is a. Uh, I guess a blessing in disguise, if you will, like Stephen, to take what you've learned and apply it in your acting and your writing, because you also have a memoir called Extraordinary Tales of Surviving Boyhood. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, uh, it was actually, I started writing it when, uh, you know, the lockdown happened um, and the, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and I was like, well, I'm probably not going to be on set for a while. I'm probably not going to be, um, you know, working on some scripts I've been working on and I've been meaning to do this for some time. Um, and, you know, as someone, I, I grew up in the foster care system and I was homeless at a certain point. And then I also went through, uh, through a youth recovery house that really changed, uh, the direction of my life. Um, and I've been meaning to write about it for some time. So it was one of those things that, um, I just felt like it was time and I just sat down at the computer. Um, you know, it took me over a month, I think to do the first draft. And then I was, you know, then I took it and then it's just, you know, it's been about seven drafts since. And, uh, you know, the structure draft, the, you know, reading, just educating myself on like Mary Carr and, and a number of, you know, brilliant memoir uh, people that have, and, and people in Vancouver here, Liz Levine, she's someone who's, uh, she wrote a memoir not too long ago. Uh, it, was, it was a really beautiful piece, really inspired me. And she's been a friend um, uh, over the years and uh and it just really inspired me to kind of keep pushing pushing the envelope and kind of keep pushing forward with this story uh and it's it's one of those things where i kind of grew up in foster care and so at this point in my life i feel 
an immense amount of gratitude just for where my life's at. Uh, you know, I'm like sitting right now, I'm in like orchard country. I'm in Creston, BC. I've got like a cherry orchard over here, uh, an apple orchard over there, like grape. Uh, you know, there's like a grapevine right here where I just proposed to my girlfriend the other day. Um, and she said, yes. So that's amazing. She didn't say no, right? Um, so that, you know, but I look at that and my, my life is in a place of, um, uh, it's, I, I can't even believe it. It's extraordinary. And, uh, and so what I want to do is share my own story in hopes that it will help other people to share theirs. Because I, I think that um, if anything lately, you know, you, whether it's on the news or in, you know, reading articles through the media and whatnot, uh, what's really helping is when we talk about things. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things that really changed my life uh, when I went through that youth recovery house is it was a bunch of young men sitting together and we were talking about things like feelings and uh, talking about things like connection. And I knew nothing about those things. Um, and, and, you know, acting, that's one of those things as well. When I got involved, um, you know, I wasn't the most vulnerable person in the world, um, but it, the connection of the craft really inspired me to, to kind of pursue this with my life. So, yeah, I went on a bit of a tangent, so I hope I hope No, I, I mean, right. I was gonna add, like it's therapeutic, right? To write about your life story and to, mm -hmm. um, to act uh, as well and but I, I understand you wanted to be an MAA fighter is that, is that correct yeah I was you know one of the things I, I um <clears throat> that really kind of kept me out of trouble for a while is when I when I did get my life together as a young man I had all this um anger and energy uh, I didn't know what to do with and so you know uh, getting into boxing and doing a bit of mixed martial arts to really help channel that into something. Um, and I, I love that part of my life. Even, even now, um, you know, I, I take that work ethic that I learned on the mat that I learned in a dojo and I apply that to my auditions. I apply that to the roles that I decide to take on. Um, and it's that work ethic. Like I, I love physicality just in general as you know I've gone up in weight down in weight acting and and I love it I'm up first thing in the morning I skip for an hour two hours and I and I train as hard as I can every day physically because I find it grounds me in my body um, and it just prepares me for a long day ahead so uh, whether that's of like writing like if I just sit down at a computer and write all the time I will become overweight in no time so I just like have to have to carry that balance wherever I go and and I find that physical that real physical exertion really helps uh, it really just just helps ground me yeah yeah and like for our mental health as well and definitely you know, it's, and I read that you I mean you're so uh, disciplined and that you uh you're not scared of roles like in 40 degree weather you I mean you're out there doing amazing physical <laughs> work do you think it stems from everything from your background into loving fitness I think so. I mean, I think honestly, it's fun. It's, it's imagination. It's, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things is like, um, you, you know, when I grew up, um, I, I was, I grew up in a time where like amazing things were being done in film, like Quentin Tarantino in the nineties. And there was uh, those not nineties movies in general are, are just my favorite. Um, and there were so many like risks being taken and whatnot. And, and now, you know, there's, there's a lot of TV you can watch. There's, there's so much content. Um, but I'm really attracted to the, I've always been really attracted to, to the actors that just completely embody their characters. Like Gary Oldman is, you know, he's my hero and, and, uh, and, and so many other actors as well. Um, but just, it's those stories I've always been attracted to and cinema in general. I mean, I, there's great TV. There's so much content. Um, you know, there's something for everybody. Uh, I, I truly believe for myself, though, I, I'm always going to be more of a film guy uh, when it comes to writing, creating my own work, and then also, um, you know, taking on these these projects where I play a leading character, like lead characters. Uh, and that, that's the thing where I, I don't, you know, if you, I'm just the kind of person that if you place me in a TV show ordering a coffee, I look a little strange. So I don't usually, I end up kind of, you know, playing an intense character in the story. So uh, I'm, you know, if, you know, there's actors who have, they can just fit into any world they choose. Like they're, they're so good, whether it's like Hallmark or CW or any of those shows. And, and I, and I like amazed, I, I think that's a, a, a really, really good avenue to go with your career. But for me personally, it's, it's risk taking story that I'm very interested in. And uh, I don't think I'm ever going to be the actor with like 150 credits on his resume. Uh, I think I'd rather keep the body of my work 
smaller um, and, and just see what happens. I mean, I, you know, you know, I could get cast in a comedy, who knows? So it's, yeah. that's another thing I love about this industry is you never know where you're going to end up or what you're going to end up doing. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you love comedy? I do. I mean, it was, it was also one of the things that got me through the first draft of my memoir and it got me through um, the pandemic. You know, I was watching the office like nonstop, like me and my, my um, fiance, we would watch the office or Brooklyn nine, nine just over and over because it was comforting. Like there was so much uncertainty and you're watching the news and you're hearing so many different stories. And um, it was comedy is one of those things I, I love. I usually have um, at home, I have like this bobblehead of Dwight from the office. And it just, I, I always have, every time I'm having like a hard time writing or whatever, I just kind of have a little conversation with Dwight and, uh, and it just always, it always helps. So that's yeah. wonderful. That's wonderful. And like you began acting, like I understand you took um, some acting classes and then you worked with, um, a scene study with the late great Robin Williams. Yeah, you it was. I've yeah um it it's <laughs> there's a little more to it than that but yes I ended up um in in a situation I've told this story like a lot lately so it's uh it's given me a lot of time to kind of look back and think about things but um yeah I went to this um it was a 12-step meeting and the first thing I always say when I talk about this is I have no idea why he was there that's his personal that was his personal business he could have been there for supporting a friend or uh, maybe something in his own place. I have, I have no idea, but I, I ended up at this, uh, at this meeting. Um, and I went there to actually support my sister at the time who, who's also had a bit of a rough go. And, uh, and so I walked in and it was like a candlelit. Sometimes they have these meetings in like candlelight. And so you can just kind of barely see everybody's face. Um, but I, I saw my sister up front and I waved to her and I sat down in the meeting and, uh, and then she started pointing at me and like pointing right beside me for me to like, look over and uh and I look I didn't really notice anyone at first and she does it again I look over and it's lo and behold Robin Williams of all people and uh so this was like a new thing like acting was like it was like a really new thing for me and like my sister was so happy for me and my friends from you know my past were really happy that I got in that I started pursuing something something in the arts and so at uh at the intermission they have like this smoke break kind of thing you go outside and everyone kind of socializes and whatnot and he was out there and so my sister right away runs up to him and is like you're my biggest fan and he like he's like I am your biggest fan and he gives her a hug and uh and that was one of the things that kind of you know that stuck out for me a lot is because you know my sister's been you know you know life hasn't always been the nicest to her and he just had no uh no judgment uh he was just so kind and gave her a hug and and then she's like oh my brother's an actor I gotta introduce you and so we kind of just like briefly connect there. And, and then after the meeting, we like go back inside, finish the meeting after the meeting, some of us, we all, we all went for coffee, him included, um, just at a place a couple blocks away. Uh, and he just was like, so you're an actor, like, what are you working on? And I didn't want to tell him at the time because I was working on Goodwill Hunting, like the a script from Goodwill Hunting with Matt Damon's character, having a bit of a meltdown and stuff. And, uh, and so I pulled it out and I showed it to him and he's like, yeah, yeah, I think I recognize this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And then, and then he's, he asked me, you know, Hey, you want to, you want to work on it? And I said, okay. And we walked a couple blocks away from everybody else into this park. And, and uh, he coached me for, uh, it was, it was definitely over an hour, hour and a half. It's one of those things. It's almost like, you know, when you're like training or something, you kind of get caught in the moment, you lose track of time. Uh, and he was so nice and, and encouraging. And, and he told me, you know, that I was meant for this and, and I've said this before and stuff, but that's one of the things I always keep in mind is uh, that this industry is just so full of rejection and bullshit that you can't control. And uh, it, it's one of those things where um, luckily I have something like that, that when someone tells me that I'm, I'm too short or too tall or too ugly or not ugly enough or whatever, um, you know, it's just one of those things that I remember Robin saying that I was meant for this. And, uh, and that's one of the things that things that has really stayed with me throughout this. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad to, you know, even, and it's interesting too, because that encouragement he gave me, even if I hadn't of um, won any awards or booked anything, just the experience of living a life centered around the arts, the vulnerability that that entails, um, the, you know, the education I had to go back and get. Um, my life is like enriched and like 100% since 
So it was him taking that time to just encourage somebody he's probably never going to see ever again. Um, that really changed the course of my life and I'm, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, things are like, they, they kind of are meant to happen, if you will, like, you know, and, and do you find your happiest is when you're creating or when you're, when you're always writing or, or acting and uh, is that the most content you feel? Absolutely. I mean, I, I feel like uh, it's, that's the thing is like, even, you know, doing movies or doing TV shows, you don't have control over that final edit. You know, like you don't, you never even hear it. Like you, sometimes you don't hear about anything for like a year, you know, and then you hear something. And, and for me, it's like the creativity that, you know, you're mentioning the, um, it's the act of the doing, the doing that is, where I find the most happiness. Uh, and that was, I was, it was a reminder for me coming up here to Creston uh, and working with my hands a bit, doing a bit of woodwork. And, and I ended up getting this audition and I just spent hours, you know, working on this bench um, for my fiance's mom's birthday. And I just spent hours on it. And uh, I was just kind of going through these lines and going through like this character and just kind of like, uh, you know, just, just kind of walking a mile in his shoes, like using my imagination, you know, doing something with my hands and just the act of doing it, the doing the rehearsal process, um, the creative process is just such a gift. It's just such a, you can't even, you know, I did the audition, the audition, you know, maybe I'll hear back, maybe not, but I walked away feeling like I really created something. And and that's the other thing is in the doing is where the happiness really lies at the end of it. You know, when you, you say like, how excited were you or how, you know, I don't even, it, it's this thing that people are talking about. That's great that I won. That's, but I remember like waking up every day, going to set uh, the collaboration of a young director who's incredibly inspiring the collaboration of uh, my cast who were very hardworking for me, that's the gift. That's the gift is just that, team collaboration on set that's that's what really that's where the fun really is at the end of it the marketing gets involved producers do this they do that i have no control over any of that but that collaboration family effort um uh on a project is that's really where the fun is had great steven and like, where can people uh, see you watch you like um, you can, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, which is Steven five, four, three, five. Um, and I'm also on Twitter. I think it's Mr. Steven Roberts. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and just Google, just Google me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, that's it. Yeah. What, what about movies and TV series? Um, yeah, I've been on a few, I've been on once upon a time. Um, I was in, uh, Tully directed by Jason Reitman, uh, starring Charlize Theron. It's a great script, great story. I encourage everyone to, um, to, to watch it, especially if they've had a child recently. It's definitely, uh, definitely, it's, a just a whole subject matter I knew nothing about before I, I read the script. And then I was, uh, then I totally fell in love with the subject matter. Um, there's, uh, I was on, Romeo section, uh, LA, the LA premiere of River Road uh, at the Lumineer Theater is on Friday, I believe. Um, and then there's, uh, it's also in Cincinnati. If you go to riverroad.com, you can see all the, uh, the theater dates when it's going to be playing in the different theaters around the States and Canada. And uh, I think the Vancouver premiere, I'm not sure when it is, but it's coming up at um, Cinematic, the Cinematic Theater. Um, and uh, just, just Google, just, yeah, yeah that's pretty much, yeah. Just Google, because you've been in, in God I Trust, Beyond the Woods. In God so, I Trust, Beyond the Woods, yeah, yeah. Okay. Amazon and, Prime, they have lots on there, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Stephen? No, just thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, I think uh, you have an interview with Alex Ponovic coming out, I believe. I'm excited yeah. to see that. Yes, thank you. And, yeah. you know, I lovely I guy so appreciate your time and uh, and i want to say congratulations to you again thank you very much appreciate that and i'd love for you to come back and maybe we can talk about your memoir you know in depth absolutely
Yeah, I'd love that.